A vessel complete. Meanwhile... Randela, the Dalmechian Republic. Byron! Quickly, my lord! Quickly! Said Eugen, not Eugene. And banished me from the battlefield. Now I'm stuck driving the backsides of this lot while the city burns and my wife tells off the man half my age. And then you turn up. What the hell are you doing here anyway? What indeed? <laughs> the enemy numbers 200,000 or more counting the yours. Holy the shit. Counting in the capital to repel an army of that size. Then, one of the central keep, held by a contingent of soldiers and bearers from the surrounding boroughs. They are the sole reason it still stands. And all it took was an army on their doorstep to bring them together. The prospect of death does put things into perspective. <laughs> perspective. Perhaps it's what we've lacked all along. That's not good. I don't want him to die. Hamel, I need you to lend me some of your best men. Preferably all of them. <laughs> My best men? Does it look like I'm able? I admit this might not be the most convenient time, but my nephew's in trouble. And I may have already promised him your help. Your nephew, the outlaw. <laughs> My soldiers have better things to do than die for nothing. And you and he are of the same mind. My fight's for the opposite. He fights for a world in which he shouldn't have to live and die for nothing. And, and he fights today to give us all the chance of a better tomorrow. Be that as it may, a handful of men cannot stand against the kingdom. Then mayhap they are the wrong men. Ah, oh, Dion, nice. Well, I'll be damned. Our numbers are few, but I shall rally as many of my dragoons as I'm able. You, apprise the Lord Strategist of the state of the city's defenses. Yes, Your Radiance. To be honest, I'm really happy he's alive. And well. And you would fight alongside us. I owe the Phoenix a debt. <laughs> Does this vouch for my nephews? Aye, but I still have my doubts about you. Which we can discuss later. Indeed. <laughs> you said you had men garrisoned in the keep. Captain, do you know how many yet remain? Allow me to confirm. Commander? Whatever their number. Randalar will be needed. Gather the bodies all. and build a pyre in the courtyard. Quickly. Terence. Terence. My lord. Still alive, also. Nice. You will find a girl there. A girl? We are in the middle of a war. I owe her my life. And I always pay my debts. You are to see that she is provided for. Dion, I cannot leave. But you shall. If I am ever to be worthy of the forgiveness of our people, then I must earn it. And I must earn it by my hand, and my hand alone. Know that I do not ask this lightly. <laughs> And know that I will do it.
Farewell, Terence. No goodbye kiss. <laughs> At least say I love you. Oh well. My prince. <laughs> well, I think they both know what they mean to each other. Sometime later, Eisler. <sighs> they should see that the wall is gone, so they should be relieved. Clive, thank fuck. You all right? I am. But I'm a damn sight better for seeing you, Joshua. Yeah. Barnabas. Done. The king is dead. <laughs> so, so, so there. Just take her to the hideaway. Come on. They are, but so is their killer. He can't hurt anyone anymore. You're safe. Not yet. You're still in a place with a lot of ether. I'm sorry, Clive. You know I want nothing more than to go with you. I do. But I'm glad you're heading back to the Enterprise nonetheless. Yeah. And not just for Edda's sake. Our people need to know what happened here. You can count on me. As can she, I hope. Thank you, me lord. Well, if they walk that slowly, it will take a long time to get back Douglas to the ship. Wise? Wiser than leaving a woman with child alone in the Deadlands. Yeah. They'll be safer at the hideaway. For now, at least. This land is overrun with Akashic. The king himself was long turned. We'll be here by choice. All to serve Ultima. In his damnable quest to forge the perfect vessel. The chaos Barnabas wreaked upon nation after nation. How many were killed for this? Oh. He didn't consider it killing. Or a mercy of sorts. A way to end their suffering. He truly wanted to save mankind, and ultimately use that. As he uses us. Hmm. But why? 
by us. What are we? Come on, Joshua, tell them. We? we are dominant. That is our fate. But that doesn't mean we have to accept it, which is why we fight. For the right to deny it. Is that not so? It is. For our sins. Barnabas said something else. That the mother crystals were Ultimus. Hmm. Ultimus? Are you son? We know that the mother crystals have been leading the land of Ether. And we also know that it's this which hastens the spread of the blight. But what I cannot fathom is what Ultima stands to gain from that. What did you find at the stronghold? The truth about Ultima's prize. For so long, I believed it to be you, and you alone. Yet, it is not merely a fruit that he desires, but a fruit and phoenix both. That which we became in the skies over Twinside. Only when the twin flames are joined, shall his vessel be complete. And this is why he's the last. Quite why he needs a vessel is another question. Yeah. Unless I still don't know why. There is something he cannot achieve without one. Something his immaterial form precludes. Something requiring an unthinkable amount of ether and a body resilient enough to channel it. If I did not know better, brother, does he want to rule the world? That he meant to cast a spell. Yeah, or destroy it. Exactly. A spell a thousand years in the making. A spell to end all spells. And he cannot do it without us. No, without the mother crystals. But if we destroy them all, we will stop not only the blight, but Ultima as well. We stick to the plan then. Only this time. Together. We face him together. Yes. Ah. Well. It's a long walk to stone here. Let's not keep Ultima waiting. <sighs> yeah, fighting alone is really stressful. If you have someone on your side, it's much more doable and uh, fun. <laughs> Alrighty. Brotherhood. I like that word. <laughs> The power of darkness. Clive has claimed a portion of the icon Odin's Ascents. Attuning with Odin not only changes the elemental aspect of Clive's magic spells, but also allows access to several new iconic abilities, such as Gungnir, a frenetic flurry of attacks that damage all enemies within range. Odin's feet. Okay, that's the sword. Zantetsuken. Ah, okay. The more you hit, then you have... Ooh, that looks cool. All right, let's read it. Odin's iconic feat, Arm of Darkness, can be used to temporarily transform Clive's weapon into Odin's legendary blade. Landing attack slowly charges the blade, readying it for Zantetsuken, which is executed by holding square. Zantetsuken potency is determined by the blade's charge at the time of execution. This looks quite cool. I'm quite certain I will get that. And then I might get rid of... Hmm, probably Remu or Bahamut. Well, we'll see. When we have new quests. His magic died with him. The road to stone here is barred to us no longer. Yes. Uh, let me just get that because I know those are potions. And I don't need to buy them. Awesome. Uh, let me just go inside quickly once more. Just want to see if I missed something which might have spawned now. Maybe a chest or something else. Something to read. No. Looks like there's nothing here. Alright. So. Let's take a look. Right there is a side quest over there. And... How about the world? Mm, okay, I don't see anything yet, but still, we're gonna go back home just to yeah take a look what there's uh, what else is new and what we can read upon. And oh, actually, yeah, we probably do this right. Abilities, sure. Odin channeled the last one. Ooh, 
I like. So, let's take a look. Uh, let's have a go with this first. Arm of Darkness. Yeah, a lot of damage. I like that. Replace Clive's current weapon with Odin's Blade. Landing abilities with the Arm of Darkness fills the Zantatsukin gauge. Hold square to execute Zantatsukin. The question is, if we get hit, will the counter be reset? Just like with this one. Let's see. Uh, attacks with Odin's Blade do not fill the limit break gauge. Okay. Pressing square immediately following a precision dodge while the Arm of Darkness is active will result in a powerful attack called Flash of Steel. Okay. Interesting. Pressing square after a successful parry while the Arm of Darkness is active will execute a powerful counter called a Steel Counter. Using both Flash of Steel and Steel Counter is one of the most efficient means of quickly filling the Zentatsukin gauge. Oh, that's cool. Mastery increases maximum level to 5. Okay. Interesting. This sounds very powerful. I'm gonna take that. Yeah, I'm gonna get this soon. What else? Gangnir. Yeah, we have seen that. Oh, this looks so cool. This looks amazing, I have to say. Wait, does this fill Zantetsukin? Are you kidding? Yeah, it does. Awesome! Summon the legendary spear Gungnir. It's, it's a spear! Oh, right. Uh, and execute an extended flourish of deadly slices and strokes. Each hit landed fills the Zantetsukin gauge. Mm, Follow-up strikes can be performed by tapping the execute button. Landing hits does not, fi does not fill the limit break gauge. Okay. Pressing X while wielding Gungnir lifts enemies. Mm-hmm. Lifting enemies in this manner limits Zantetsukin gauge gain, but renders them vulnerable to follow-up attacks. 20 seconds cooldown, this is quite short. Uh, upgrade increases follow-up attack speed. Uh-huh. Strike multiple enemies with a single Gungnir. Interesting. Oh, hey, wait, wait, wait. Uh, we have... Ah, but it doesn't do much damage, and it doesn't do a lot of stagger damage either. But filling up the Zantetsukin is actually quite nice. And then you can hit a hard. Hmm. Heaven's Cloud. Oh, this looks like... Wait, this reminds me of Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, with this one move. The one combo move. And I think it did it by pressing L1 and R1 at the same, ti at the same time, I think. It's a three-slice attack. Yeah, I remember this one. Search forward to strike an enemy. Can be executed multiple times in succession if previous hit lands. Each hit landed fills the Zantatsukin gauge. Does a little bit of stagger damage and just a little bit damage normally. Uh, but still, it's for Zantatsukin. Mm -hmm. uh, it will not fill the limit break gauge. Recommended for when surrounded by multiple enemies. Mm -hmm. Upgrade increases the number of times the ability can be chained. So I think the first is maybe three hits, looks like in this video, and then maybe four or five. And collateral hits as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, Rift Slip. That does no damage, really. Uh, but they are getting, like, what was that? Used to recover immediately from any ability or action. Oh, okay. Create a temporal rift to immediately recover from any ability. Can be used in midair. Using while executing another ability will temporarily slow time. Reduce Rift Slip cooldown by 50%. Okay. Upgrade immediately recover poise after taking damage. Using to recover poise after taking damage also reduces rift slip cooldown by 50%. Lengthens time slow and further reduces ability cooldown when used while executing an ability. Interesting. Rift combo. Use rift slip after attacking an enemy and follow up with a different attack. Okay. And dancing steel. Interestingly, none of these attacks will do a lot of damage or stagger damage. They are mostly used to fill up Zentotsuken that you can do more damage. Hmm... Alright, Dancing Steel. Summon a second blade and unleash a flurry of attacks. Each hit landed significantly fills the Zantatsukin gauge. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, quite a lot. Ah, oh, this is so difficult. What should I take? Maybe I should get rid of, rid of Ramu then. And then go for Bahamut and Zantatsukin and Garuda. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, locking onto an enemy with L1 before executing ability will focus all hits onto that target. If no target is locked onto, Clive will move between nearby enemies, dealing damage to all. Alright. Fills the Zantetsukin gauge. Does not fill limit break gauge. Ability is cancelled if first strike does not land. Interesting. But only 45 seconds cooldown for a big attack. Like the main attack is actually quite short. Or the others have like 90 seconds, maybe 120 seconds. If you look at Titan, for example. Upgrade significantly increases number of hits. In Dancing Steel, land all hits from a single Dancing Steel on a single enemy. Ah, yeah. Ah, okay, I have to think about that. But for now, we're gonna move on. Before we go to stone here, we're going home, like I said. We're gonna take a look at what we can read.
new items at Karen's Toll, and oh yeah, there's, oh yeah, and new hunts as well. And, oh, we have some at the Aligned Reports too. So, okay, first we're gonna go to Karen, and then the Black Hammer, just to see what we can get. And then we can upgrade our sword as well. Then we can take a look at the sword at the Orit Stone. We might just change it, but I might keep the Mazamune depending on how it looks. And then Hippocrates, Vivian, and then Aligned Reports. We're gonna do those before we go to the hunt board. All right, now we can buy Clutch Mine. That is new. That's actually it. Okay. Is that all? Yeah, is that all? That is my question. That wasn't much. Trouble with your gear, or... So, will it be? So, Everdark. There we go. Icebrand is gonna, uh, gonna be morphed or crafted into Everdark. But it is worse than the Ragnarok. Not bad, if I do uh, say so myself. No, we're not gonna equip it yet. So, what do we need for Götterdämmerung? Aurichalcum, Darksteel, Primitive Battlehorn. Yeah, yeah. Hunts. Some hunts. Ouroboros, Stone Tongue, and Aurichalcum. Alright, that's actually it. Let's take a look at this new sword. Here it is. Ever dark. Yeah. Mm hmm. Hmm. Actually, it's new. Yes. Let's take this. Sure. We still have the Ragnarok equipped. It's quite nice. We have seen the Mazamune. We have fought with that. And now it's ever dark. Yeah. Let's see the whole length of it. Yeah, quite cool. I like. Right then. Next up is Hippocrates. Good morrow to you, my friend. And to I you have too. compiled some new entries. If you would like to see them. Level up. Most likely. Yes. Recorder of I the realm. I have quite the find for you today. Level 7. Oh, oh okay. There's, there's quite a lot. All right. Let's get started. Barnabas' mother. Hidden truth. One of the few surviving descendants of the children of Zemeckis, who fled from Belastia and took refuge in the Outer Continent, only returning generations later. She and her clan were devout believers in the circle of Malleus, whose teachings she instilled in her son, teachings and memories that he treasures to this day. Alas, her beliefs were also to prove her downfall as she was killed in a raid by the followers of a rival religion. Aha! Uh -huh. Moss the Chronicler, a hidden past far-fabled scholar of Thalestean history and legend. When Hippocrates was but a boy, Moss visited his village on the outer continent. Perhaps seeing something of himself in the young scholar-to-be, the great master took him under his wing. However, their time together was soon to come to an end, for one day Moss and his journal were gone, leaving nothing but a note behind, one which read, Seek Knowledge. The young Hippocrates took these words to heart. Zemeckis Falls, Hidden Truth a vast circular cavity carved from the Dalmachian coast, it is here the mother crystal known as Zemeckis once stood. In the age of the fallen, man, hoping to claim the power of the gods, laid siege to the crystal in an attempt to gain entry to its ether-rich heart. Rather than attempt to fend off the assault, he instead responded by destroying the mother crystal and its heart, the great crater left behind standing as a reminder of man's hubris. The Continent Lore a vast landmass situated far from Ballastine shores. Aside from the most intrepid traders, few have been known to brave the journey, there or back, for which reason the character and customs of its peoples remain a mystery to most. Legends claim that remnants of the fallen fled, I want to say thither, thither, from the twins when their civilization collapsed, but even the most bookish continental would be hard pressed to explain what became of them in the intervening millennium. Drake's Horn a mother crystal which stood in southern ash, an area now lost to the blight. The thought of Drake's horn left Drake's spine, the only mother crystal on the continent, and sparked a decades-long conflict for control of its ethereal bounty. After much bloodshed, it was the erstwhile nation of Veldamark which finally subjugated the warring tribes of ash and established a kingdom around what is now Stonehear. The War of the Magi one of many great conflicts waged near the end of the Age of the Fallen, in which mankind, fielding fantastical clockwork armies fueled by powerful magics, fought for control of the Mother Crystals. This, however, worked to hasten the drain of the Aether from the land and thereby give rise to the Blight. By the time the fighting had ceased and peace was restored, the wounds suffered by both humanity and the land had grown too deep to heal, and civilization began its slow yet inevitable march into darkness. It was only a matter of winters before the thousand years of knowledge used to build the great Magitek faded and was eventually lost to history. 
The Circle of Malleus, an ancient religion from which more recent savior cults grew. Its beliefs were originally drawn from murals left behind by the people who lived near the mother crystal, Zemekis. But while at one point it was a faith followed throughout Velastia, time and the fading memory of the ancient culture that spawned it saw it gradually fall from favor. The Inner Sanctum, Hidden Truth, sacred chambers in which the hearts of the mother crystals are enshrined. Erected far before the time of the Fallen, when humanity was still in its infancy, their original purpose was to simply provide protection for the fragile cause. As time passed, however, they were slowly transformed into places of worship. And echoes, hidden truth, strange clockwork constructs often encountered in and near fallen ruins. They were once only ever found protecting such structures, but in the aftermath of primogenesis, beneath the blackened skies that followed, they emerged from the ruins at last and can now be seen all over Velastia. Though widely assumed to be vestiges of the fallen civilization, it seems they were in fact originally servants of Ultima, created by him in a time lost to memory, and that it was only over long years of scavenging wreckage from fallen ruins that they took on their current form. Since Ultima's reawakening, they have been guided by his will and his will alone. You wish to study the tomes? Okay, there's still so much more. So let's just continue with person of interest. Joshua Rusfield, united against Ultima. Dominant of the Phoenix and younger brother of Clive, his researches into Ultima culminate in the revelation that the creature's true form is one and the same with Ifrit Risen, the creature he and his brother transformed into in the skies above the crystalline dominion. His grip upon the creature he sealed away inside himself by the altar of Drake's head ever fading, he swears to stand with Clive and fight their fate until the end. Dion Lesage at the sack of Randela, dominant of Bahamut Warden of Light. Making good on his promise to Joshua Rusfield to join him in his fight against Ultima, Dior rallies his dragoons to the defense of the Dalmachian capital of Randela, saving the city from Akashic assault. He entrusts his troops to Eugen Havel before setting out to pledge his personal loyalty to the Rusfield's cause. Sleipnir Harbard, Death Lord Commander of the Kingdom of Velud's armies. He was in fact a magical creation of Odin, and when his master primed, Sleipnir followed, taking the form of the icon's six-legged steed. What? I didn't know that. But an Egi cannot exist without its icon, and when Barnabas died, so too did he. Aha. Uh -huh. Interesting. I had no idea that he was actually the horse. Cool. And then again, I thought Sleipnir had something to do with, uh, with the snake. Oh, but okay. Barnabas Tharm, a top reverie. King of Velud and dominant of Odin, the Warden of Darkness. Scion of a tribe that crossed the seas to Velastia from the southern continent many centuries before, Barnabas remains a zealous adherent of their ancient religion, the Circle of Malleus. Tasked by his god Ultima to assist with the perfection of his vessel, Barnabas put Mythos to the test, at last judging Clive worthy and surrendering his strengths to him with his dying breath. Oh, okay. It was just a test. That's why we had to fight him. Byron Rosfield, joining Clive's cause. Younger brother of the late Archduke Elwyn and warden of Port Isolde. Though he kept his head low during the dark days of imperial rule of Rosaria, now that the Empress Annabella is dead and his nephews returned from the grave, he strikes out once more, enlisting his old friend Eugen Havel, Dalmachian Field Marshal, to Clive and Joshua's cause. Sir Terence, at the sack of Randela. Second in command of the Dragoons, Terence is both Prince Dion's faithful bodyguard and his lover. He joined the prince in his ill-starred coup in the Crystalline Dominion and after somehow surviving the disaster that followed, went with him again in the relief of Randela. It was here that Dion finally released Terence from his service, begging him to care for the orphan girl Kihel, that those to whom he is indebted might be spared further danger. Eugen Havel at the sack of Randela Former Field Marshal of the Dalmachian Republic, while there was a time he took personal command of his troops, Hugo Kupka's rise to prominence led to his being recalled from the battlefield by reason of his advancing age. However, it was the battlefield that was to return to him when a horde of Akashic attacked Randala, and with the ministers either stupefied or slain, he was left with no option but to coordinate its defense. And the last person of interest, the Republican Prime Minister at Randela. Leader of the Dalmachian Parliament, not seen since the collapse of the Republican government following the death of Kupka and the fall of the Fang. Whether he was killed in the chaos or fled to save his own skin, no one knows. On we go with the lay of the land. The Dalmachian Republic, a republic on the brink. 
A nation formed from a federation of five smaller states, it is located in the southern half of the continent of Storm and has its capital at Randala. After the fall of Drake's Fang, a combined force of Akashic soldiers and orcs descended on the capital and came perilously close to destroying what little order remained. However, thanks to the intervention of Prince Dion Lesage of Sunbreak and his Knight's Dragoon, disaster was averted at the last moment. Randala, following the sack of the capital. The capital of the Dalmachian Republic. It was once a thriving hub of commerce, where merchants gathered from across Valestia and people enjoyed a life of peace and prosperity under the guidance of the Parliament of Ministers, who oversaw the nation's affairs from the safety of the Ministry of Law. Since Ultima brought about primogenesis, however, Randalus streets have been all but abandoned to Akashic Veluda soldiers and beastmen on the hunt for flesh. On we go, Mysteries of the Realm. Ancient Mural, Hidden Truth. A religious image of the Circle of Malleus, an ancient faith that worshipped both the Mother Crystals and Ultima. It depicts the icons arranged in adoration of a central figure thought to be Ultima, the god that rules above them all. Joshua discovers an unblemished version in the depth of the Veluda stronghold of Yalahorn and learns that the figure thought to be Ultima is in fact that of Ifrit Risen. Ifrit and the Phoenix united as one. Yeah. I knew this from the beginning. And uh, by the way, Yalahorn sounds Icelandic, I wanna say. And looks like it too. Oh, and then there's just the bestiary left. Odin, hidden truth. The Warden of Darkness who rides into battle atop his six-legged steed, black blade in hand. His latest dominant, King Barnabas of Belud, a man scholars believe to be a descendant of the ancient modes of darkness within whose line all dominants of Odin are born. However, they have as yet been unable to prove this point, on account of no records of any Odins before Barnabas' Tharm having come to light. Interesting. Very interesting. The door to the shelves shall ever be open. We're gonna move on and talk to Vivian. Back again? I am. What is it that you wish to learn? Same text as always, so we're gonna read this one. The fall of King Barnabas. As King Barnabas breatheth his last, so too does his magical barrier shimmer and fade, leaving the road to stone here open once more. His death does not, however, stall the advance of his Akashic and Orcish armies, who batter down the gates of the Dalmachian capital of Randala. Onward to stone here, Clive bests Barnabas and absorbs from him the power of Odin. He returns to Isla, where he finds his brother waiting and the barrier that once blocked their path gone. While Gav accompanies Edda back to the hideaway, he and Joshua continue on to stone here. Okay, I'm gonna walk around a little bit. Maybe I can find Edda again. I wanna see where she is, if she's really here already. But we're gonna do this a bit later. Let's just take a look at what we have here. Fancy a look at the list, do you? Yes, here I do. Here you go. It should be maybe just the one. Yeah, yeah, it's just the one we have seen late to rest. Okay. Uh, client is a wounded royalist. Really? Somebody else is still alive over there. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna do this soon. This is the next quest Seen we're gonna enough? do. And now let's take a look at... The Hunts. <laughs> My little furry friend. Uh, furry friend. <laughs> right. Okay, there are a bunch. We have... Goba Much. <laughs> funny, funny. A rogue goblin has been sighted several times in the abandoned village of Eisler, presumably drawn by the stores left behind when the villagers departed for reverie. Those said villagers will not be returning, we shall surely seek to reclaim the village for mankind once this is all over. I suggest that we end the goblin's misery now, before he tears the houses down in his search for sustenance. Rank A, okay. So this is an Eisler in Valut. Bygirl, this looks like another coral. Among the diverse beasts that make their home in the loot, there are many that seem not to be creation of nature, but of some malign god. Bygirl is one such creature, a cat that takes on almost perverse delight in hunting down the few survivors of the human race that yet survive on the far continent, and toying with them as a child might a doll, complete with the chewing of their extremities. Critten Hollow, yeah, we haven't been there yet. Okay, also the loot. Agni. Ah, oh, this looks like Fafnir. Okay. Wait, was it rank A too? Yeah, also rank A. A band of curse breakers making a first foray into the loot encounter this creature near the road through Halfcomb. Though those with memory of ash before its fall knew Agni as a peaceable beast, one worshipped as the Yalkona of the North, the Aether has since addled its mind, sending it barreling hither and yon, crushing anything in its path. To end its torment would be a mercy. Halfcomb. Yeah, we have been there. I have an idea where he might be. Also rank A. 
And I think the last two will be rank S. No, rank A. Usher to the Underworld. Travelers of the Gilded Path share stories of the Crystal Giant. A Crystal Giant, not iron, not golden, but crystal, okay. A beast who haunts the path less trodden, illuminating the shadowy canyons with the unmistakable blue glow of ether and painting them red with the blood of his victims. If our suspicions are correct and this creature is another construct of Ultima, then only by laying him low might we truly begin to live on our own terms. It's on Titan's Wake and Dalmachia, and the last one should be S, right? Also A. I was expecting more S rank. The Blood Moon. Oh, that doesn't sound good. At the Croc in Sunbreak. After the collapse of the fallen civilization, their technology slept silently within the ruins of their airships for many a long year. However, of late, these echoes of the fallen age have begun to awaken, attacking any strangers on sight, presumably as they were designed to do. While some are easily escaped, this particular echo persists in pursuing its targets until they lie dead in the dust. Okay, I think we might just get everything we need for Götter Demo, but we'll see about that if we really get everything. So we will do the side quest first. As you can see, I switched it around a little bit. I have mastered these two, that I can put it onto that one, and I hope this is fine. We're gonna test this out, and then we might just change it in between. We'll see. Alright then, we're gonna make our way over to Isla, and then we're gonna make our way north to the Mother's Mines, and we're gonna start and finish late to rest. And what do we have here? What now? Is there no peace for a dying man? What happened here? The ether floods made savage priests of my companions. And those faithless orcs, I knew they weren't to be trusted. We were told that they would stay loyal to our cause. Something commanded their loyalty. But it was not us. It's a wonder they stayed faithful for so long. Perhaps they sensed our downfall. The king is gone. Our nation in ruins. <laughs> what becomes of us loyal pawns now? Sworn to a shattered throne. Fuck Wallowed. <clears throat> Dead king and his god. <clears throat> Fuck this withered shithole. <sighs> the floods do not affect you. You are a bearer, albeit one who's lost his brand. Pray, hear me, brother. Will you grant this pawn his final wish? <sighs> Will you lay my dying soul to rest? Of course. What do you need? Uh, finally, some luck. Beyond the castle walls, towards stone here, there is a forest. Never turn. My parents are buried upon the bluff, nestled amongst the trees. Theirs was the only love I ever knew. I was torn from them in life. But perhaps I can return to them in death. Take my ring. See that it rests beside their bones. I thought I was supposed to carry him there. May you find peace at last. Yeah, we could actually call Ambrosia and then put him on her back. And then lay him to rest over there, but... Hmm. Yeah, he's already dead. Tarnished ring. Alright. Uh, 913. This is quite a way to go. Yeah, this is quite a way to go. Okay, so we will come across our main storyline on the way. And then afterwards, we're gonna make it to our next destination. So let's just keep moving on. Don't tell me. The only way to the capital... ...is through that gate. Just as you surmise. There's an army down there, Joshua. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
but I don't see any dominance. Okay. Uh, the Great Southern Gate. Where are we? Alright, this area is quite big. We're gonna take a look around as always before we make our way through that gate. Right, first chest. Holy shit! Okay. Okay. This is quite cool. It doesn't hurt as much, but it's still quite cool. And you can actually, like, level up the Zantetsuken already and then use it on the next enemy. Nice. Yeah, it doesn't load the limit gauge. Yeah, we heard that. But interesting. Oh, we read that. Yeah. Ah, oh, shit. Nice. Chest number two. And a second chest. Uh, no, a third one, actually. Okay. And now we need to fight these guys. Not a long -term soldier in sight. They will end their suffering. Every damn is sinew. Uh huh. This is for us. I wish I had a past Ultima. He's made nothing easy so far. Still more. Joshua, can you go on? Do I have a choice? There's even more. Ah, god dang it. Oh, I thought so. Joshua. This one's bigger than the others. And Lena, find out a bit. Let's try. I think I might get used to that. Oh, then again, maybe I will need another 
ability of Odin's, just because it's taking quite a long time to level up the Zendotsukin. <coughs> Joshua, you alright? We can rest here if you like. Don't worry, I'll be fine. Okay, cool. So, dealt with those guys? Yeah, and we're just gonna move on. Oh, there's a chest. Look, Clive. Yeah, yeah, we're kind of close. I'd have found her. The place is a fortress. Yeah, we knew this already, didn't we? Actually, I was sure about that. Right, Critten Hollow map. Mm hmm. Cool. Yeah, we're gonna take a look around. Oh, there's. Seems like there's a way to go over there. Probably to the hunt to one of the bounties. I'm quite sure there was one over there. Uh, we're gonna go there later. We're gonna take a look over to this side and that side and then around this whole area and then gonna make our way to this spot. Okay, I need to get off here because there's a chest nearby. Dude, I wasn't even ready yet. Alright, let's see. Ah, level 3. Very nice. So, let's get this chest. Mm-hmm. No villagers. No knights. Not even any bodies. One could almost believe the whole kingdom had turned to Kashyyyk. Be safe. Do I need to fight, really? Oh, could you just leave me be? Okay, yeah, they're leaving me be. Nice. Thank you. So, let's bury the ring. He'll be able to see all the way to stone here. As fine a resting place as any man could hope for. Reunited with those he loves at last. Yeah, that was a short one. So, that was late to rest. Looks like a level up to me. Yes, there we go. Ah, uh, clutch mine. Yeah, yeah, we have those already. Okay. Yes, we lost the Tarnished Ring. That's fine. So, that's actually it. I don't want to move on yet. We're going to make our way home. Although, no, we're not going to make our way home yet. We're going right here and make our way to this spot. There are some bombs we have to fight. And then we're going to see what's up back there. There should be one of those hunts. I'm quite certain. So, let's do this. <laughs> 